This week on American Grindstone, we have Elisa Cuellar. She is a mom, she has a full-time job, but she's an exceptional woodworker. And when she gets out in the shop, she makes some really cool things. She's gonna talk to us about transition in life and setting yourself up for your dream job. The Grindstone. My sonny boy kept his nose to the grindstone. Never give up, never surrender. So today we're with Elisa. Elisa, welcome to hey, the show. thanks. Appreciate it. Um, I love this for so many reasons. One, I've known you for so long. I admire and respect you. Thanks. And I love the sweet stuff that you make. And I know that you hate this. <laughs> I and absolutely <laughs> do. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So this is like challenge accepted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryan and I are here to make you love it. Okay. You'll love we'll it. We'll see. And then when you leave I'll tell this you at week. The end. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah. good. <laughs> Uh, don't tell us when you watch it back. Okay. Because everybody has an opinion mm. about how they look how on they camera. Look on, yeah. yeah. And I yeah. definitely like, I'm like, well, Micah, <laughs> oh. this is so not the angle I want you to have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we all wear black. It's very slimming. Yeah. And he there hides in the back because he's <laughs> I, I, For the day we started this, I'm like, oh, that's going to be my chair. And yeah. uh, every Just week. that nice little corner. <laughs> yeah, corner. Yeah. I can hide. And, he, and he's 34. Yeah. So he's got the yeah. bot of a 34 year old. Yeah, so, you know. just a tight 34. So hot. No, no so hot. Brag, no uh, Elisa, you uh, do a lot of fun things. I um, do. You event plan. Mm -hmm. You've raised three kids, three girls. Three girls, yep. Um, how old are your daughters now? 21, 19, and 16. Good night. That's yeah. crazy. So two of them are out of the house now. We just got one. Unreal. One little one. Oh, Who's, not little. <laughs> Who's not little. Who's not little. Who's not little. Yep. And you do a lot of event planning I and do. event work for church. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's my main job. Yep. And then a lot of just side fun events yeah. too. Which so. is what we're here to get into today. Yeah. yeah. Now, before we do though, Ryan, at my 40th birthday, I mm -hmm. had like 600 people party for my 40th birthday. You're 40 plus? What's going yeah. on here? Yeah, I, I just, first time you knew that. <laughs> I've been telling down. you I'm 37, but. Uh, salt yeah. and pepper, uh, yeah. 37 at least. This peaked at 25. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> but Elisa was on my like my team of people that like put on this big 40th birthday party. It was fun. Oh, it right was on. super fun. It was a lot. Yeah. Right yeah. On. They had uh, t-shirts that said like chaos coordinator or something yep. like that. Because oh, so you were already events planning that. Wrangling yeah. the chaos of Sean Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And because she's done it for so long, it was yeah. just the perfect fit. Uh, can I hire yeah. you now? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I've thought about it over the years often. Like <laughs> someday I just want to steal Elisa because she could help my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in so many ways, be more organized. Organized. Yeah. 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 Yep. But uh, we're not here to talk about that. Uh, I want to just talk a little bit about some of your passion projects. Mm -hmm. I think the thing that most interests me about you is your passion for woodworking, yep. uh, especially with the scroll saw and some of the really unique things that you do. We have one of your signs kind of yep. hung up in the background here. Mm -hmm. um, I asked you to bring some stuff in because I wanted people to kind of, people that watch the podcast, I wanted them to be able to see it. Yeah. But tell me a little bit about when you were young, kind of what did like arts and crafts look like for you as a kid and kind of how did that turn into wanting to do woodwork? I think I've always been super creative. So, you know, like when mom's like, go do something, I'm, you know, busy. I was the one who took all the construction paper, all the glue, all the glitter and paint and, you know, made cards for everybody mm, right like yeah. he always got that handmade card for me when I was little or if my dad was home and working the wood shop then I was helping him with whatever project he was okay. was doing so that kind of my love for being in the wood shop is definitely started when I was little with my dad with your dad mm -hmm. I love that. what kind of st yeah. stuff did your dad make um so what he when I was little was a pastor and mm. so it was kind of his side hobby and he built a lot of cabinets he did some spec houses there were a lot of days of me pulling up like roofing material and yeah. all the nails yeah. so not all of it was fun yeah <laughs> but um, you were just child labor at that I was point. child labor yeah. picking yeah picking up the trash around the job site so those days were not as fun but he had like a pia full piano that he restored restrung mm -hmm. and like had full ivory keys just little projects he made a lot of trivets for people i'm trying to think what's a trivet you know like when you have a hot pan and you want to put it on your table and not burn oh, yeah. your table oh gotcha yeah. gotcha yeah yeah <laughs> trivets and cutting boards that kind oh, of thing that's our vocabulary so, yeah, word yeah. Of <laughs> yeah. <laughs> trivet. Trivet. shows up at trivet. the bottom of the yeah. screen trivet. Yeah. Yes. a lot of boxes i don't know he just had always 
I don't know. He's a woodshop dad. Yeah. He has like a million projects that are not done. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I so. love when <laughs> pastors though uh, like work with wood, and you're like, oh, it's so perfect. Right. Yeah. He's They're just minister. like Jesus. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're getting so much closer. To Jesus. Yeah. 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 He did cabinets for a while. I wasn't allowed to help on any of those. So. Jesus yeah. was mostly yeah. a furniture but guy. I love, I love yeah. that he was totally cool with you going in there to help oh, him yeah. though. You know, because th- th- that isn't the case with some fathers. Uh-huh. I'll be, as, as as one, that my dad didn't really let me help on anything. Okay. Like, that's fantastic. Yeah, my mom permission. didn't always appreciate it when I, like, run in. I'm like, five. Hey, I got to use the big radio arm saw today. <laughs> yeah, She's yeah. like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. But, like, it ingrained it within you, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, you didn't start doing, I mean, you really didn't get serious about woodwork until, what, Five, ten years ago? No, not mm. even. Not yeah, even. I started, oh, man, 2018 Yeah. when the whole painted sign on wood, like, uh-huh. was the big hit. Um, yes. I was like, oh, I Live, can laugh, that. love. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm glad that's done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> glad that's done. And, and I um, that one, yeah, yeah. I did not make any of those, I will add. But... <clears throat> I was like, I could do that. Why would I pay someone to do that? Because I do enjoy painting. Mm. And I was like, oh, I'll just do it. So I made a couple as, like, gifts. And then, of course, some people, oh, you could make that? Like, bake it for me. How much would it cost? I don't know. You know? So it kind of slowly turned into a business. And then everybody was making painted signs. And I didn't love it because it was, like, the same thing. Everybody wanted the same thing. And I didn't like just making a stencil and putting it on there. And scrolling Instagram one day, I saw someone with a scroll saw doing 3D. And I'm like, I love that. Yeah, I yeah. want to do that. Yeah. So I hopped on Facebook Marketplace and I bought a $60 old. Wasn't that mine? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no. I, thought I, I thought I hooked you up with a scroll saw. No, you gave uh. me the planer. Oh, that's Yeah, what your was. dad's planer. Uh, yeah. yes, yes. Which I have used I still have it. Use Fantastic. it all the time. Yes. No, this was some guy. He had it in like a storage shed and he used it maybe twice huh. and it was pristine condition. That's exactly 60 bucks. You and buy that so, from. Yeah. So I took it home and started figuring it out, looking up a yeah. lot of like YouTube, YouTube videos, yep. how to and stuff. And yeah, just be able to do like depth and different things. And yeah. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the progression of it. So really, the scroll saw work has only been like four years okay probably five years maybe wow. mm-hmm. yeah yeah what, what made you think like because like i'm that person too where i'm like i'll see something online but i'm like i could never what made you go like i could do that like or gave you yeah. like what big question we ask around here what gave you permission to go i could do that well my husband gave me permission to buy the saw <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it was crazy right yeah but i don't know i think i've always been willing to try things and knowing it's okay to fail like i am i am very much a perfectionist so Mm -hmm. it irritates me but i am okay with failing at first if if i think i can make that if that fills you to the perfect yeah i love that yeah so and if it's something new no one's good at something new right away right like nobody is superwoman so you just have to try it. I don't know. Which yeah. makes but, me yeah. laugh a little bit because <laughs> I, I was like, this is gorgeous. <laughs> this is fantastic. You're like, that's a prototype. Yeah. Like, this isn't to you yeah. perfect, but to us no. it is. And I offered no. her money for it. She's like, well, just don't look at it close. And I was like, <laughs> well, now I'm looking close. <laughs> and it looks perfect. And it looks great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's great, though. Yeah. So definitely the perfectionist comes out yeah. a lot now that I'm more into it. But there's – and. There's always more you can do. You can use different elements. You can use, you know, different techniques to yeah. achieve different things. And so that's what I love about it. It's not just, you know, painting. Static. Not just yeah. painting. Yeah. yeah. You can give dimension and depth. And It's not just really like you said, a vinyl on mm-hmm. top of a board where it's like, you know, yeah. I need to challenge myself a little bit here yeah. and then find the perfection in that as yeah. well. Tell, tell us a little bit about, like, the process of, how, like, how you made – Let's just say the sign since we have it mm-hmm. up. So first of all, who are the lions? Because not all of our viewers or listeners would understand that. So yes, the lions are our local high school my, that my children attend. So and they're sport girlies. So we are go lions. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I use like Adobe Illustrator and design mm-hmm. everything. Um, just whatever the client wants or whatever something like if I want to try something new, I wanted to try 
the three or the LED lighting on mm-hmm. the sign because yeah. I'd never done it before. And that's great. Adds another element, right? So, um, came up with the design, kind of decided the depths of that I wanted, um, the standoffs. There's standoffs there for the lighting and standoffs is the thing that kind of gets it away from the yes the wood. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, yeah, and um, slapped the lights on, and my husband helped me do the soldering and prayed it worked, and it did. That's <laughs> so amazing. that's kind of how that process went. That's but, fantastic. Um, yeah, so I just do I design, print off the design, and cut it on my scroll saw a yeah. lot of sanding i spend a lot of my time sanding yeah. <laughs> priming and then painting yeah do you like my dad used to do a lot of scroll saw work and he would like adhesive spray the pattern on the wood and cut it is that what you do or do you i trace have it? done that um i because i like working for painted stuff i like working with mdf mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that literally soaks in the adhesive spray yeah, and kind of ruins it so i actually usually cut um like a stencil out of vinyl and Mm -hmm. then either use that or or hand draw and trace it depends on what my pattern is so if it's something like a flower that doesn't have to be perfect sometimes i just hand draw that real quick or use a stencil so um but on hardwoods you can definitely more easily because the sanding Mm -hmm. just sands right off so simple Mm -hmm. now did you um when you started this process and you had your sixty dollars scroll saw. Yeah. Did you feel like this is adequate for what I want to do, or did you feel like no, nope, I need to upgrade? And like, what did that look like? Like, yeah. what are like the kind of key tools in your arsenal? Well, in order to make something, really, all you need is the saw and a sander and a drill. Like, really, anybody mm-hmm. can do it. It's not like you need something huge and fancy. three tools. Very simple. Three tools mm-hmm. and a lot of. Sanding elbow grease, yeah, <laughs> but and creative yeah, mind as well. And, too, yeah, creative mind know. is important, but um, yes, I found as I did more and more, I did need to upgrade to something bigger. Mm-hmm. There is, um, it's called the throat. I needed a deep throat. <laughs> yep, we, yeah, we we get that to, for the wood to be able to move around on because cut you that, use that, yeah that. no, <laughs> no. <laughs> there's no. no yes you need a bigger space for the wood to fit into because yeah. what you are doing is moving the piece of wood around the saw blade mm. and so in order to pivot you bigger items you want you know bigger space in order bigger to surface. pivot yeah. the yep. wood so yes when i started doing more and more things also the quality older stuff is built great but sometimes the vibration you know just technology has improved so gotcha. there's no like vibration it's easier to hold it down you're not maneuver it yeah, yeah cramping at the end of the night from holding wood for a couple <laughs> hours so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah what's a what's a crazy uh, basic question here what's the craziest like custom thing you've made oh I don't uh, know. Actually, like, what do you mean by crazy? Either, crazy, I guess, uh, would be most challenging. Yeah, most challenging. Yeah, most probably challenging. A better way to, to what was the one that, like, you just felt like, I don't know if this is ever going to get done? <sighs> well, I think everything. And there's so many failures in yeah. woodworking. So it's how you kind of overcome and make it the outcome, I feel like, mm. is. So that is a really good question. I think it's, okay yeah, well, I'm trying <laughs> to think like, I mean, there's some really big pieces that yeah. I've had to cut. And so that's hard because you're like trying to like hold this piece of wood to the saw and cut it out precisely. Yeah. And you're like, you know, reaching over cause mm-hmm. it's this huge long thing. So those are the hardest. Um, but then at the same time, you know, like I've cut out like little tiny things this oh, big and stuff. super yeah. intricate. So yeah, they, like the challenge is, and I think that's kind of why I like it, is there's always some sort of And it varies, challenge. right? So yes. It's like even it's in those not big ones, always you might the have same a little thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the lighting is kind of hard yeah. for me, which is why my husband helps me with the lighting part. So mm-hmm. hey, I haven't I haven't is, conquered soldering yet. Soldering so. is super <laughs> difficult, and there's like no room for error, so I no. totally yeah. get that. Yeah, yeah. 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 but it's the totally lighting adds a fun element, so yeah, yeah that's a lot of fun. Absolutely, it makes it pop. Yeah, absolutely. What are kind of your favorite uh, projects to work on? Do you like doing kind of like signs like this or like with a lot of color? Do you like to do, you know, family crests? Like what is, what are the things you find yourself focusing the most Um, on? You know, I have done mostly painted stuff. Obviously the more element, like if you go more into hardwoods, that costs more because hardwoods cost more, right? So kind of figuring out what my client's budget is and what their 
design want is mm-hmm. and kind of trying to marry the two and come yeah. up with something that honors both of them. So I'll, I love the painting part of it and being able to create like dimension with paint. Um, but I would love to be able to like use some acrylic, use some metal because mm-hmm. you can cut metal on the scroll saw too. And oh. being able to use more um, hardwoods was, is what I would love to do yeah. more of. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I've done a good mixture of, uh, business logos, a lot of nursery signs, a lot of just little lettering sayings, you know, for people to put up on their wall. Yeah. Um, I've done some off stuff too, but like moss art. Throw, I just mm-hmm. throw a little bit in there. <laughs> here yeah. and there. <laughs> like that. yeah. Build a door. There's some things that I've made that I'm like, I will never do that again. And I haven't even posted a picture of it uh. because I do not want anybody to know. <laughs> to, to know <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, it turned out great, but I never want to yeah. do that uh, again. You know, something we haven't asked on the show, I think of some of our other guests that I think I you might have a better handle on anyway is like, how do you figure out what to charge for something like that? Like, oh. that's a really, to me, I look at that and I'm like, I don't know, is it 50 bucks? Is it $500? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It is not $50. Yes, I know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the no. labor alone, right? Yeah. It's like, oh. So pricing is hard. And I think everybody prices themselves down, right? Yeah, they like, undercut themselves. Yeah, you you nitpick. You know, like, oh, this is, this wasn't for, oh, you know. And mm-hmm. so you price down. But you also kind of have to know the demographic of your area. In the woodworking world, I am definitely on the lower end. Mm. Uh, but there's people that live in areas where they can charge 400 bucks an hour. And mm, the wow. sign might take over 20 hours to make, right? Yeah. So they're... That's not our demographic here in this area, which is totally fine. Yeah. So um, I think over the years, I've definitely learned like, no, my time is worth it. I've worked hard to be where I am, always learning new things, yeah. always getting better, right? But I worked hard at the skills, found tricks that other people can't do. Yeah. Um, there's definitely things that you can do on a scroll saw that you can't do with a laser yeah. or a CNC machine and then vice versa, right? So it d- just depends what you want to do so it's definitely hard to figure out how to price your worth to make your time make it so you're actually making a little bit of money yeah. too right because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that's important if you're yeah wanting it to be a business so so what like <laughs> what took you to that threshold where you're like this is what my time is mm. worth because i think like again everybody undercharges, right yeah. it's uh, imposter syndrome right yeah. especially yeah. when you get started you're like can I really charge this? I'm, I mean, yeah. I'm just yeah. getting started. Yep. To, you oh, know, that, I can't you do what that, that person time and time does. Again. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Where yeah. it's like you don't see the value of yourself as much as everyone else sees the value. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So that's a hard one. Yeah. Um, I There is a really good community online mm-hmm. of, like, women woodworkers. And they, over the last couple of years, I think some of the more prominent people that you would see online, like if you just went to Instagram and typed in scroll saw who would mm-hmm. pop up, they have been very great and very vocal That's about fantastic. helping other makers. Yeah. Uh, just kind of figuring out there's, you know, price of material plus the cost of your time to get that material mm-hmm. plus the cost mm-hmm. of, you know, how many hours, like figure out how many hours does it take you to sand something this big? Mm-hmm. How many hours does it take you to cut it? Like, mm-hmm. and Obviously, some people are really, really fast at cutting. Some people are really fast at, like, sanding, priming, putting everything Mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. So I think the more you do it, the more you kind of figure out, like, I can pretty accurately estimate now if it's stuff I've done, um, how much it'll time it'll take me to to make it. So. I just picture you standing. I'd be watching like a. I'd put a like a, a TV in my garage, <laughs> and I just sit there in sand um, and sand. Well, I, I don't actually know how you do it. What do you do? Do you? <laughs> I, was gonna, I was hoping you would. Randy, I you let her sand do. in the house. Yeah, <laughs> put I the do. Towel down. I down? do. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Um. Lots of podcasts. Lots of books. Lots of music. Yeah. Right. And. And I just zone out with during like the sanding and the cutting part. So it's it's cheap therapy. You just oh, kind of yeah. zone out mm. and do your thing and think about things or not, depending if you want you know, yeah. a book in. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, if I have a lot of like little, little stuff, I will absolutely put like a big blanket or towel down and throw in a show. And, Good for you. Because that would be the hardest yeah. thing for me, just standing there sanding. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. my wife knows. That it's like <laughs> She's like, all right, you got to fold the laundry this time around. I did it last time. I'm like, all right, well, I'm doing it in the living room. She goes, I know. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I have to. I was I'll go crazy yes. in this room. Yeah. Bad, you know? Yeah. When I started uh, I, through college, I worked at a custom cabinet shop. Yeah. That's and right. My, and my first summer, I was the only male sander. Mm. And so uh, we worked for <laughs> four and a half days. So it'd be nine hour, nine plus hours a day of me just sanding pieces of cabinetry that came past the table. Good grief. It was hell. That, and I was going to yeah. say, Podcast, doing just like yeah. playing with no end. Yeah. Like, I mean, you finish no a end. piece, but it's really no end. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you're not, <laughs> you're not saying anything even fun. You're sanding a, right. you know, a door. Yeah. yeah. And you have your... It back when I was doing it, you had a discman if you had money. Yeah, if you had right? money. Yeah, yeah. And if it didn't skip while you were moving, Exactly. Right? And yeah, then once yeah. it got full of sawdust, yeah. you were done. Yeah. Like, you had to yes. go get more discs. Yes. And CDs so. always end so quickly, oh, too. They do. Yeah. They do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you... But I want to talk a little bit about scaling your business because, mm -hmm. you know, the point with you to get you to come here was <laughs> I want to like do this more full time. Yes. So I need to put myself out there. Yep. Um, so tell me about that. Like, what is your, like, do you have a, do you have a five year plan? Do you have like, no, this is just kind of the dream or like, like, how do you, what are you working towards? I think more of a dream, not a set goal. I, I am terrible at goals, but so it's more of like, okay, this is my dream. If I want to achieve it, I need mm -hmm. to, you know, get yeah. off off my butt and do something about it. So my youngest graduates in two years, which is so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I'm like, I have the rest of my life. So crazy. Like, also I so wonderful. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. But I have the rest of my life. So what do I actually yeah. want to do? And because having kids so young, you know, I feel like I haven't had that time in my life where I'm like, okay, what do, what do I want to do when I grow yeah. up? Mm. Right. Because it was all focused on mom and kids and sure. wife and all of that, which is all fantastic. But yeah. there's a whole nother chapter or two or three or five left yeah. in my life, hopefully. So, um, yeah, this next two years, I guess my goal would be is to, it's very part-time, all my nights, weekends, if mm. I have stuff. And I haven't really ever done advertising. I throw, I have a social media and a website, but mm. I don't advertise anywhere for it um which and people we'll put find those me. in the show notes by the way so yeah. if you're <laughs> check it out sure. yeah people find me like i've sent stuff to michigan and georgia and mm. alabama like oh, i mean i've wonderful. had you know people find me but um yeah consistency right so just getting out there and advertising a little bit more and yeah. and it's not just it is fun but just being able to do that full yeah. time like get up in the morning and go to the shop i know like most girls don't want to do that, Wonderful. but that's why you're on the show, I though. I that. love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah just get too. out, go in the shop, play with some spray paint and some wood, yeah. and, and create. Yeah, that's and the create. best part. So. Like, honestly, the best part of this world is just being creative and having ideas flow from you, or like bouncing them off people, or sketching, or drawing, yeah. or crafting, making something, mm. yeah, doing something. And that's what I love about woodworking is that there's so many pieces and elements that you can do mm. and change, right? Like you can give each of us a piece of wood and we would each make something completely different, yeah. mm. right? Yeah. And so it's never the same thing over and over again, unless you allow that. So mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> I would be, since we're both woodworkers, I'd be really curious to see what Ryan made out of the same piece of wood. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I think it would actually be outside of the box and super fun. So right? We can, we can give him the drill, your dad's drill. Yeah, the hand drill. <laughs> yeah, the hand drill? <laughs> well, what yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's a time traveling <laughs> podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> that should be really be the niche. You should just come out with it and say you're a time traveler. All right, everybody. Podcaster. I'm from 1957. Oh, 57. Yeah. 1902. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like the quantum leap of woodworkers. Yeah. I guess. Like, just jump. Yeah. I guess we have, we got to have some context for this. I'll grab the yeah. drill. Yeah. Quick. There's a drill. Yeah. So my, I grew up in a household of woodworkers and uh, craftsmen. My granddad always built cars and engines okay. and my dad always did. My dad did scroll saw a ton, which. Which, which I love because there's not very many people no. who have or know what it is. No. So. And so my first, this is, sits on the shelf over here, but for my my first year in middle school that I wanted to do woodwork, my dad gave me this drill and said, you have to use this for your first summer. <laughs> Back in 1902. In 1902. And it has the handle, screws off. It's amazing. And you have all your drill bits in the end. 
I do love that though, because it's like he wasn't looking out for your safety. Oh <laughs> you yeah, know? like there you go. But Take the this level one. of craftsmanship before power tools, yeah, amazes no. me. Truly. Amazes me. Yeah, Truly. yeah. Tongue and groove, a lot of tongue and groove oh. stuff, and like yeah, get thrifty with you it. You don't use know? any nails, those no. kind of things. No, yeah, it's amazing what people could do. Well, I even look at this. You know, like this could be a very different. But look at like they made the center, the spokes here. They made them curved. You know, like the artisanal work behind even the metal work on this mm -hmm. thing and then the way that the gears work uh, look at that to thing still works forward. perfectly yeah. it does yeah i've never yeah. you don't have to oil it or nothing no so perfectly. i i i just think man things are built so well and yeah i would uh, not be doing woodworking if that was me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i would be a little bit too impatient i think that. my confession <laughs> was that i built to last like even like houses yes. back then my house yeah. is a 1928 you have the cutest it, house thank you so much I for saying so i appreciate that oh. we're it's a work in progress i love it um but like yeah you look at the nails like we could see the nails at some spots and like square nails mm -hmm. and i'm like what the and back then they used to all the extra material left over they would dig a pit in your backyard throw and throw all the pit, all that stuff in the pit oh, yeah. and then close it up. Well, when we were doing our backyard, we found like all materials, nails, things like that. It was wild. The things they used. Wow. Just it was throw absolutely it in the dirt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no bodies. Though. <laughs> yeah. Not a body. No. A lot of toys. Weirdly enough. Okay. I don't know who lived in the house before me. A lot of toys. They're buried like, in look, my, my backyard. Kids bad. We're going to go bury <laughs> it. It's <was laughs> like Sid, Sid from Toy Story. Yeah, don't oh, know yeah. Where it's like, came. yeah, it was like, yeah. So, you know, you, you've been a mom and had a full-time job. Mm -hmm. You talk about kind of like nights and weekends doing this, but like, how does, how do you manage your time? And honestly, I asked that as a loaded question because I know you to be a very good time manager in a lot of, oh. in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. so. I was going to say very carefully and not well sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so that's nice of you to say yeah. that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, I have a very organized brain, so I make a lot of lists. And so whether it's my week or my day, I just make a lot of lists and yeah. Hopefully I can accomplish what I need to in that mm -hmm. day. So whether it's for my nine to five job and then come home, drive, you know, kiddos to sports or whatever. Now they all drive, which is very helpful. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then making sure I happen to get enough sleep somewhere in there so that yeah. I can start my day all over again. So that's a harder one than that. You think, yeah. Honestly. Yeah. So there are definitely times that I look back and I'm like, how did I do all that? Mm -hmm. Like when the kids were a lot younger. Um, so now I, I feel like I have so much more time on my hands, which is, yeah, you know, they're older, mm -hmm. they're more mm -hmm. self-sufficient. So that's nice. I don't you feel. You only have one at home. Oh, we have Lexi at home. Yeah. 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 So they, they're all leaving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a different, it's a completely different season. So yeah, it was a lot harder. I was a lot more tired. I had to be very conscious of, all the fun extras. Nope, can't go. You know, yeah. out with friends tonight. I gotta, I gotta go in the shop and finish some things. So, mm. so it's yeah. both kind of disciplining yourself to keep things, writing things down, but also saying no to other things. Yeah. So that you could really stay yes. focused. Yes, and also I've had amazing clients. So there's been many times where I'm like, yeah, I, I should have that done in three weeks, no problem. And then you know, a kid gets sick or something comes yeah. up at, at yeah, my yeah. actual job or the paint got screwed up and mm. so I have to start all over. And so everybody so far has been amazing and, you know, Wonderful understanding. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Understanding. So I think they realize if they're buying something creative, there is a creative person behind it. Mm. And so they're not yeah. always, you know, like it's gonna take some time. Yeah, gonna take some time. Well, so which is so true. It's like if if you're buying things off Amazon, you realize like, all right, next day, sure. But when you're buying like artisanal like crafts, you know, from a craftsman or yeah something that's custom made like you have that window of time it's like i'll see that in a month or two or mm -hmm. whatever and like, they hopefully they understand yeah. yeah and i mean i tell people up front like I, I don't have a laser machine i'm not hobby lobby if you yeah. want that that is fantastic go and buy it from there because it's amazing but if that's not what you want then you'll yeah. have to yeah be willing to wait or it, it'll cost more than Hobby Lobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but it will last forever. But it will, it will yeah. well, hopefully it will last yeah. forever. Yeah. yeah, a long time. You'll get that extra handmade yeah. love mm -hmm. in it. So yeah. I remember in 1902 when I ordered this thing. <laughs> <laughs> it finally came. It finally came. It finally came. I was like, oh, oh man. technology <laughs> caught up. <laughs> <laughs> there was a Lisa just in the shop. Just, just yeah. cutting <laughs> all the way. Making it happen. <laughs> yeah. Love the callback. That was great. Yeah. Um, 
So the dream is I want to do this full time at some point. Yep. Tell me about Eventually. like what's the next dream tool? Like what's the next thing that like you're mm. like, oh I because oh, I know you tool. have a dream tool somewhere. Yeah. Which which is at the top of the list right now, I you guess. You can even give us your more... couple. <laughs> yeah. You're like an employee to sand. Um, <laughs> no. Yes, yes, an employee to sand. Um I think the biggest thing that I would love is to be able to move out of my garage. I know my husband would love this too. Mm-hmm. Move out of my garage and have a dedicated shop. Mm-hmm. That would probably be the biggest thing. Um, that way my family can have the garage back. It's yeah. not always full of dust. but And have like a proper paint room you know, with ventilation. Then I can just paint, put on a shelf, let it dry yeah. so it has mm-hmm. better you know, climate controlled because... In the winter when it snows, I am out there with a little heater doing stuff. And in the hot, hot summer, I spray and I run inside and bring it into our bathroom. Our bathroom always has projects in it uh, (laughs) because it's more (laughs) climate steady. And so things dry perfectly in there. And so half the time, nobody can use our one downstairs bathroom because things are drying. (laughs) Uh (laughs) So the next kind of big idea would be, hey, I I love a space. Yes, love a space. Yeah. Yeah. And then... With that, you know, have like the full on like dust collection system for each of my tools and yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. So eventually I might actually want a laser. I know I, that's kind of against what people uh-huh. think, but there are certain things that they can cut faster and quicker than yeah. I can. Oh, sure. And so it would save and they can cut other materials too. Yeah. Like you can add some leather in there, add some other metal elements or something just to, I would still always use my scroll saw because that's what I absolutely love. But yeah. have that kind Stepping of as down. like the tool employee in the background, right? Mm-hmm. Do two things at once. So yeah. yeah, I think one of the things that I think is really interesting about what you do is like this is a pretty, it's three dimen- very three dimensional, but it's also kind of two dimensional and mm-hmm. like there's not a lot of, but I asked you to bring some stuff in and you brought in this poster board. <laughs> I don't know if Micah can see it on the camera. But what I love about what you did with this is kind of lay out like the process and you use, you said you use this at a craft show to show people kind of what you do. So you created your design, you selected your blades and then you put it on the scroll saw to kind of cut the, the main shapes into it. But now you're starting to get into some weird, like you're shaping it. You're adding like a dimension. Yeah. So are you doing that with your hand sander or (laughs) like, do you have like a, no, I do. I have a rotary tool that has different bits on it and different Um, ones do different things. So the rotary tool does a lot of the shaping. I also have, yeah, use my, just my normal disc sander, Mm -hmm. turn it upside down and my fingertips are pretty much gone. (laughs) I have no fingerprints anymore. They've all been sanded away. Um, (laughs) but yeah, just using that and then a lot of hand sanding to get the smoothness. Mm -hmm. So, I really sand um, four to six times per project, everything. Over the whole thing. Over the whole thing, yeah. And um, just as, because I like to nerd out about this stuff, do you like, you start with like an 80 grit and you work your way up to like a 400 grit or? So if it's painted, the MDF is pretty soft. I don't usually start, well, sometimes I start with 80, but Mm -hmm. 80 to 220. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go up really high either. No. So, because it's, but when you, yeah, when you get to the hardwoods then you want to. A have grit. A, yeah and no. have a wider range of that yeah. so yeah when we think about like our listeners you know the idea here is like we want people to get up and earn their story like get off your couch right yeah and do something hard and you said you already said in this episode how you know you just have to get up and do it and you have to just take some first steps and yeah you I loved how like you laid it out like it's simple it's three tools that's all I really needed yeah. to get started and yeah. you, Women can do it. You know why? Because men do it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, don't be afraid, right? This like, is a human condition. It is. A, yeah. yeah, it is a human thing. Like, yeah. I mean, I know when I go into Lowe's and Home Depot or Bellingham Millworks, I look like the lost woman, right? Like, half the time I got my nails on, I got heels <laughs> on. I do not look like I belong. And so um, it's great to have extra help sometimes. Sure. But sometimes I'm like, no, I actually do know what I'm doing. Yeah. And yeah. The only way to do that is to actually do it and to ask. Like, there's so many people that know way more about yeah. woodworking than I do. And so I am yeah. always happy yeah. for that. It's like, what are you making? Oh, I've done this. And, you know, trying out different techniques. Yeah. I love it. 
So let's say a stay-at-home dad or stay-at-home mom is listening to this podcast right now, and they've got some sort of ambition or dream, but they got a bunch of little kids in the house, and they don't Mm -hmm. know how. Like, what advice would you give somebody kind of in that season of life to get them at least started in a direction where they could start to create and build things that's like... So I feel woodworking is easy to include kids if Mm -hmm. you have enough patience. So give them a scrap piece with a paintbrush or some glue. And guess what? They can sit there and glue up a little tower while you're doing something. Or throw on a movie and set a timer and you know you only have an hour and a half in the (laughs) shop and you will have to pop back in and check, you know, on the kiddos. Most of the time I did it when they were asleep. So at school or, you know, come home at lunch when they're all at school. Okay, I have an hour. I'm going to quick sand this. And so then it's ready to go when I get home. I can paint Mm. it. I have to wait two days, you know, for it to set. So just kind of finding those pockets of time. But it's hard when you put the kids to bed and all you want to do is sit down on the couch. But, yeah, yeah, you can sit down on the couch and sand, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, Well, and I think that's that's the best takeaway from this is, like, you can – Incorporate these things into your life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you just got to be a little bit creative. Yeah. And when it's nice out, when it's nice, go in the backyard. Like you can, you can, I brought the scroll saw outside. You can put it down. Your kids That's can smart. run around the yard. You can, you can do stuff Soak with them. Soak up some rays yeah. do yourself, right? S- sanding, painting, all that. Yeah. You can do it outside. Yeah. While they're running around. Also like so. just the setting yourself up. Like I know it started as a passion, but also like now, you know, last kids leaving the house in a couple of years mm-hmm. and you're setting yourself up for a life, you know, being empty nest. Right. Yeah. Which I love that. I and you're not too. even 40. Such a, no, a for- I'm not 40 yet, but I'm close. <laughs> yeah. I'm close. It's coming. The foreshadowing for that. <laughs> yeah. Like being like, well, you know, this is something I love. And mm-hmm. when they're gone, Hey, I'll, I'll have more time. Yeah. So I love setting that up for yourself. And it's mm-hmm. such just a, a really healthy way to look at the future. I think, yeah. especially with a passion that you're really yeah. into. I think a lot of people talk about, you know, when kids are little and how to Mm. kind of keep your sanity through when they're little. And part of that is having hobbies. So it's good to figure out kind of what that Mm. is. But a lot of people don't talk about when your kids leave, how much extra time you have, because all your time, all your energy, right? You've poured into your kids. We want them to be great human beings and productive members of society. And then guess what? They grow up and leave you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it is overnight, yeah, right? Like, that. oh, I'm going to college. I'm not going to see you for yeah. six months or, you know, and and a lot of people don't talk about no. that weird in-between season. And I don't know, like sitting at home alone in an empty house, it's not fun. No. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like Scares it's nice me. for a little while because you're like, oh, I can relax. I, I can eat what I want without someone being like, oh, can I have a bite mm-hmm. of that? You yeah. know, or mom, I need a drink or whatever it is. Yeah. But you um, serve your kids alcohol? Juice. Oh, apple juice, juice drink. Apple <laughs> juice. <laughs> juice. Oh. juice. <laughs> well, I think, I think, Elisa, that's what I really like about this is one of the reasons I really wanted you here is because you're about to experience a whole other season of yeah. life. And mm-hmm. I think so many people find themselves blindsided when that comes. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like I've invested all my life and all my energy and my resources into mm-hmm. raising my family. And I'm about to get to a place where I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah. And what do I do? What do I do with all that extra time? Mm-hmm. And who am I yeah. without them? Yeah. You know, or yeah. not mm-hmm. even just kids, but who am I without you know, X, Y, Z, whatever that is, you know, cause you're still mom or you're still dad, but it looks so different, right? Like it looks different when your kids are a toddler versus when they're driving, Mm -hmm. they still need you. Mm -hmm. It's just in a very different way. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. My kids still call me every day, mom, how do you cook eggs or how do you, you know, but it's not the same amount of time and energy. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Lisa, thank you so much. I think like I, I just keep looking at that sign. I think it's such like a piece of inspiration that hangs on the wall. Like, I just think like, you know, there's, there's a lot of story behind it. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to talk about today was like, what brought you to this place? And I think that's, that's an encouraging thing. I think for our listeners, my hope is it's that it's these simple things that people can do that really Mm -hmm. inspire them to kind of go to the next level. So, yeah. uh, Do you have any final advice for everybody? Like, Oh no. I am not the one with words. Yeah, I've known Elisa long enough that I knew that that question was not going to land. She faced into the background. Yeah, that actually 
It's a good gift to have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's like the Scottish goodbye. You just leave. You don't yeah. say goodbye yeah. to everyone. Yes. 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 I've leave. heard of that, too. Yeah. You just leave. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No one needs to know. Yeah. I respect that. <laughs> I also can't believe that that's the prototype still. Oh, I, that it's is, gorgeous. Yeah. Absolutely Thank you. Gorgeous. Yeah. Hey, I'm Simba Pride over here as well. So yep. True. True. I, and I don't mean Lyndon. I just love the movie Lion King. No, yeah. kidding. Yeah, we do. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And Thanks you did great. Me. Thanks, Thanks for not sucking. Yeah, well, yeah. we'll see. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching American Grindstone. We are passionate about getting people out of their heads, off the couch, and doing some of the things that they've dreamed and schemed about for years. So we hope that you subscribe and continue to follow a lot of our wonderful stories. And hey, maybe someday your story will be here too.